The musty scent of old papers and mothballs fills my nostrils as I rummage through the dusty boxes in Grandma Evelyn's attic. It's been two weeks since we laid her to rest, and the task of sorting through her belongings has fallen on my shoulders. Mom and Dad are too busy arguing over the inheritance to bother with the sentimental stuff. As I sift through the yellowed photographs and faded letters, a small, unmarked envelope catches my eye. Curiosity peaked. I carefully tear it open, revealing a handwritten letter. The date at the top reads, June 15, 1965. My eyes widen as I scan the contents, my heart pounding in my chest. My dearest Winston, the letter begins, I can no longer keep this secret from you. The child I am carrying is not yours, but the product of a moment of weakness with another man. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. This can't be real. Grandpa Winston isn't Dad's biological father? I read on, my hands shaking. I know this revelation will cause you pain, but I cannot bear the thought of living a lie. Please know that my love for you has never wavered, and I will understand if you choose to leave me. Forever yours, Evelyn. Tears blur my vision as I try to process this bombshell. How could Grandma have kept this secret for so long? And why did she never tell Dad the truth? I stumble downstairs, the letter clutched in my hand. Mom is in the kitchen, preparing dinner. Mom, we need to talk, I say, my voice trembling. She turns, her brow furrowed with concern. What's wrong, Zoe? You look like you've seen a ghost. I thrust the letter towards her. Read this. It's from Grandma. As Mom's eyes scan the page, her face drains of color. She sinks into a chair, her hand covering her mouth. Oh, my God, she whispers. I never knew. Is it true? I demand, my voice rising. Is Dad not Grandpa's biological son? Mom nods, tears welling in her eyes. Your grandmother confessed to me years ago, but she made me swear never to tell a soul. She didn't want to hurt your father or your grandfather. Anger boils inside me. So everyone just kept this secret? How could you lie to Dad all these years? It wasn't my place to tell him, Mom says, her voice breaking. Your grandmother begged me not to. She said it would destroy him. I pace the kitchen, my mind reeling. He deserves to know the truth, Mom. We can't keep this from him any longer. Just then, the front door slams and Dad's booming voice fills the house. Natalie, where's my dinner? Mom flinches, wiping her eyes. Please, Zoe, not now. Let me handle this in my own way. I shake my head, anger and betrayal coursing through my veins. No, Mom. Enough secrets. It's time for the truth to come out, no matter how much it hurts. I storm into the living room, the letter still clutched in my hand, ready to confront the man I've called Dad all my life. The facade of our perfect family is about to shatter, and I'm the one holding the hammer. As I sit at my desk, my mind wanders to the countless times Dad has belittled Mom, treating her like a servant rather than his equal partner. His arrogance and sense of entitlement have always been a source of tension in our family, but I never understood why Mom put up with it. Now, armed with the knowledge of Dad's true parentage, I can't help but see his behavior in a new light. Has he always felt the need to prove himself, to assert his dominance because deep down he knows he's not a true Hawthorne? I think back to the countless family gatherings where Dad would boast about Liam's accomplishments, praising him as the future of Hawthorne Enterprises. My boy's got what it takes to lead this company, he'd say, clapping Liam on the back. He's a chip off the old block. Meanwhile, I'd be lucky to get a cursory nod of acknowledgement. It was clear that in Dad's eyes, Liam was the golden child, and I was just an afterthought. I can't help but wonder how Liam will react when he learns the truth about Dad. Will he still idolize him, or will he see him for the fraud he is? A knock on my door jolts me out of my thoughts. Come in, I call out. To my surprise, it's Grandpa Winston. He enters my room, his face etched with worry. Zoe, your mother told me about the letter, he says, his voice heavy with emotion. I nod, unsure of what to say. I'm sorry, Grandpa, I didn't mean to uncover this secret. He shakes his head, sitting down on the edge of my bed. No, Zoe, don't apologize. You have a right to know the truth. He takes a deep breath, his eyes distant. I've known about Garrett's true parentage since before he was born. My jaw drops. What? But why did you never tell him? Grandpa sighs, his shoulders sagging. Because I loved him as my own, Zoe. From the moment I held him in my arms, he was my son, blood or not. He looks at me, his eyes glistening with tears. 
I couldn't bear the thought of him feeling like he didn't belong, like he was less than because of his mother's mistake. I reach out, taking Grandpa's hand in mine. You're a good man, Grandpa, but don't you think Dad deserves to know the truth? He nods, his expression pained. You're right, Zoe. It's time for the truth to come out, no matter how much it hurts. He stands up, squaring his shoulders. I'll talk to your father. He needs to hear it from me. As Grandpa leaves my room, I feel a mix of relief and apprehension. I know the revelation will be a shock to Dad, but maybe, just maybe, it will be the wake-up call he needs to change his ways. Later that evening, I'm setting the table for dinner when I overhear raised voices coming from Dad's study. I creep closer, straining to listen. You lied to me, Dad shouts, his voice filled with rage. My entire life has been a lie. Garrett, please, Grandpa pleads, his tone calm but firm. I never meant to hurt you. I raised you as my own because I love you. Love? Dad scoffs. You call this love? Letting me believe I was a true Hawthorne when I'm nothing but a bastard? I flinch at the venom in his words. I've never heard Dad so angry, so raw. Garrett, don't say that, Grandpa says, his voice cracking. You are my son, no matter what. That will never change. There's a moment of tense silence, then the sound of shattering glass. I jump back, my heart racing. Get out, Dad seethes. Get out of my house, old man. I never want to see you again. Tears sting my eyes as I hear Grandpa's footsteps retreating, the front door slamming behind him. I know in that moment that our family will never be the same again. The tension in the dining room is palpable as we sit around the table, the clinking of silverware against china, the only sound breaking the uncomfortable silence. Dad sits at the head of the table, his jaw clenched and his eyes fixed on his plate. Mom keeps glancing at me, her expression a mix of concern and apprehension. I take a deep breath, steeling myself for what I'm about to do. Dad, we need to talk. I say, my voice steady, despite the nerves fluttering in my stomach. Dad looks up, his eyes narrowing. About what, Zoe? I'm trying to enjoy my dinner. I pull the letter from my pocket, holding it up for everyone to see. About this. About the fact that Grandpa Winston isn't your biological father. The color drains from Dad's face, and for a moment I think he might actually faint. Then his expression hardens and he slams his fist on the table, rattling the dishes. Where did you get that? he demands, his voice low and menacing. I found it in Grandma's attic, I reply, refusing to back down. It's a letter she wrote to Grandpa, confessing that she had an affair and that you're the result of it. Dad's eyes dart to Mom, who looks away, unable to meet his gaze. You knew about this? he accuses, his voice rising. You knew and you never told me? Mom flinches, her hands trembling. Garrett, please, I wanted to tell you, but your mother made me promise not to. Bullshit! Dad roars, standing up so abruptly that his chair topples backward. You're just as much of a liar as she was. Liam, who has been watching the exchange with wide eyes, finally speaks up. Dad, calm down. Let's just talk about this rationally. Dad rounds on him, his face contorted with rage. Stay out of this, Liam. This doesn't concern you. Like hell it doesn't. Liam shoots back, rising to his feet. This affects all of us, Dad. We deserve to know the truth. Dad laughs, a harsh, bitter sound. The truth? You want the truth, Liam? The truth is that I'm a fraud, a bastard. I'm not a real Hawthorne, and I never will be. I shake my head, my heart breaking for the pain I see in Dad's eyes. That's not true, Dad. Grandpa loves you. He raised you as his own. Love. Dad scoffs. He lied to me, Zoe. He let me believe I was his son when he knew all along that I wasn't. That's not love. That's betrayal. Mom reaches out trying to take Dad's hand, but he yanks it away. Garrett, please don't do this. Don't let this destroy our family. Dad's eyes flash with anger. Destroy our family? Our family was built on a lie, Natalie. A lie that you helped perpetuate. He turns to me, his expression cold. And you, Zoe, you just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? You had to go digging up the past, stirring up trouble. I feel like I've been slapped. I was just trying to understand, Dad. I never meant to hurt you. Well, congratulations, Dad says, his voice dripping with sarcasm. You've succeeded in tearing this family apart. With that, he storms out of the room, leaving us all stunned and shaken. Mom bursts into tears, burying her face in her hands. Liam moves to comfort her, shooting me a helpless look over her shoulder. I sink back into my chair, the letter falling from my numb fingers. I never wanted this, never wanted to cause so much pain. 
but the truth has a way of coming out, no matter how deep you try to bury it. As I sit there, listening to Mom's sobs and the sound of Dad's car peeling out of the driveway, I can't help but wonder if our family will ever be the same again. The facade has been shattered, and I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to put the pieces back together. The days following the revelation of Dad's true parentage are tense and uncomfortable. Dad locks himself in his study, refusing to speak to anyone. Mom tries to carry on as if nothing has changed, but I can see the strain in her eyes, the wariness in her movements. Liam and I walk on eggshells, unsure of how to navigate this new reality. We've always known our family was far from perfect, but this secret has torn open wounds we didn't even know existed. One evening, I'm sitting in the living room, trying to lose myself in a book when I hear the sound of raised voices coming from upstairs. I creep to the bottom of the staircase, straining to listen. Garrett, please, you can't keep doing this, Mom pleads, her voice muffled by the closed door of their bedroom. You need to talk to someone, to work through your feelings. I don't need to talk to anyone, Dad snaps, his words slurred. I realize with a sinking feeling that he's been drinking. I just need everyone to leave me the hell alone. There's a moment of silence, then the sound of something shattering. Mom cries out, and I hear Dad's heavy footsteps stomping towards the door. I scramble back to the living room, my heart pounding. A moment later, Dad appears at the top of the stairs, his eyes bloodshot and his hair disheveled. He stumbles down the steps, gripping the railing for support. "'Where's Liam?' he demands, his words thick and clumsy. "'I don't know,' I stammer, my throat tight with fear. "'I think he went out with friends.' Dad grunts, staggering past me towards the front door. "'Useless, the both of you. Can't even keep track of your own brother.' I watch helplessly as he grabs his car keys from the hook by the door, my stomach twisting with dread. "'Dad, wait. You can't drive like this. You've been drinking.' He whirls on me, his eyes flashing with anger. Don't tell me what I can and can't do, Zoe. I'm still the head of this household, no matter what that damn letter says. With that, he storms out of the house, slamming the door behind him. I rush to the window, watching in horror as he peels out of the driveway, tires squealing against the pavement. Mom appears at the top of the stairs, her face pale and her eyes red-rimmed. Zoe, what happened? Where's your father going? I shake my head, my voice trembling. I don't know, Mom. He just left. He's been drinking and he took the car. Mom's hand flies to her mouth, her eyes widening with fear. Oh, God, Zoe, we have to stop him. He could hurt himself or someone else. Just then, Liam bursts through the front door, his face flushed with anger. I just saw Dad tearing out of the neighborhood like a bat out of hell. What the hell is going on? I quickly fill him in my words tumbling over each other in my haste to explain. Liam's expression darkens, his jaw clenching with determination. We have to go after him, he says, grabbing his own car keys from the hook. Mom, stay here in case he comes back. Zoe, you're with me. I nod, my heart in my throat as I follow Liam out to his car. As we speed through the streets, scanning the road for any sign of Dad's car, I can't shake the feeling of dread that settled in the pit of my stomach. We've been driving for nearly an hour when we finally spot Dad's car, parked haphazardly on the side of the road. Liam pulls over and we jump out, running towards the vehicle. Dad is slumped over the steering wheel, his eyes closed and his breathing shallow. I feel a surge of relief when I realize he's still alive, but it's quickly replaced by anger and disappointment. Dad, wake up, Liam says, shaking his shoulder roughly. We're taking you home. Dad stirs, his eyes fluttering open. He looks at us blearily, confusion and shame warring on his face. Liam? Zoe? What are you doing here? He mumbles, his words slurred. We're here to save you from yourself, Dad, I say, my voice hard, before you destroy what's left of this family. The next morning, I wake up with a sense of purpose, determined to uncover the extent of Dad's deceit. I head to the office early, using my paralegal access to dig into Hawthorne Enterprises' financial records. As I pour over the numbers... A pattern begins to emerge. Large sums of money transferred out of the company accounts and into offshore holdings. Suspicious invoices paid to shell corporations with no clear purpose. My heart sinks as the realization hits me. Dad hasn't just been lying about his parentage. He's been stealing from the family business, lining his own pockets at the expense of everyone else. 
I print out the incriminating documents, my hands shaking with a mix of anger and disbelief. How could he do this? How could he betray us all like this? I'm so engrossed in my findings that I don't hear the office door open behind me. It's only when I feel a hand on my shoulder that I jump, whirling around to face the intruder. It's Dad, his eyes narrowed, and his expression thunderous. What the hell do you think you're doing, Zoe? He demands, his voice low and menacing. I hold up the papers, my own anger rising to meet his. I could ask you the same thing, Dad. Or should I say embezzler? Dad's face pales, but he quickly recovers, snatching the documents out of my hand. You have no idea what you're talking about, Zoe. These are just standard business transactions. I laugh, a harsh, bitter sound. Standard business transactions? Is that what you call stealing millions from your own family's company? Dad's eyes flash with rage, and for a moment, I think he might actually hit me. But instead, he takes a step back, his expression twisting into a sneer. You think you're so clever, don't you, Zoe? You think you've got it all figured out. He shakes his head, a mocking smile playing at the corners of his mouth. But you don't know the half of it. I feel a chill run down my spine at the coldness in his voice. What are you talking about, Dad? He leans in close, his breath hot against my face. You think this is just about money, Zoe? No, this goes much deeper than that. He taps the papers in his hand, his eyes glittering with malice. These transactions, they're not just for me. They're for your mother, too. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. What? What do you mean? Dad smirks, a cruel, triumphant expression. Your mother's been having an affair, Zoe? For years now, and I've been paying her lover to keep quiet, to keep up the parade of our perfect little family. I shake my head, refusing to believe it. No, that's not true. Mom would never do that. Wouldn't she? Dad counters, his voice dripping with disdain. She lied about my parentage for decades, Zoe. What makes you think she wouldn't lie about this, too? I feel tears stinging at the corners of my eyes, but I blink them back, refusing to let Dad see me cry. Even if that's true, it doesn't excuse what you've done, Dad. Stealing from the company, lying to Grandpa, it's wrong. Dad's expression hardens, and he takes a step towards me, his fists clenched at his sides. You think you have the right to judge me, Zoe? You, who's been nothing but a disappointment to me your entire life? His words cut deep, but I force myself to stand my ground. I'm not the disappointment here, Dad. You are. And I'm going to make sure Grandpa knows exactly what kind of man you really are. I turn to leave, but Dad's hand shoots out, grabbing my arm in a bruising grip. You're not going anywhere, Zoe. Not until we get a few things straight. I try to pull away, but his grip only tightens, his fingers digging into my skin. Let go of me, Dad. You're hurting me. He leans in close, his eyes boring into mine. You listen to me, Zoe. You breathe a word of this to anyone, and I'll make sure you regret it for the rest of your life. Do you understand me? I nod, my heart pounding in my chest. Dad releases me, shoving me away from him. I stumble, catching myself on the edge of the desk. Get out of my sight, he snarls, his voice filled with disgust. And if you know what's good for you, you'll keep your mouth shut. I flee the office, my heart racing and my mind reeling. I know now that the man I once called Dad is nothing more than a monster, a liar, and a thief. And I'll stop at nothing to make sure he pays for his crimes. I race home, my mind whirling with the weight of Dad's threats and the evidence of his crimes. I know I can't keep this to myself, can't let him continue to deceive and destroy our family. As soon as I walk through the door, I call out for Grandpa Winston. He emerges from the kitchen, his brow furrowed with concern. Zoe, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. I take a deep breath, steeling myself for the conversation to come. Grandpa, there's something you need to know. It's about Dad. We sit down in the living room and I lay out everything I've discovered. The embezzlement, the offshore accounts, the hush money paid to Mom's lover. I watch as Grandpa's face grows more and more ashen, his eyes filling with a mixture of disbelief and heartbreak. When I finish, he sits in silence for a long moment his head bowed and his shoulders slumped. Finally, he looks up at me, his expression hardening with resolve. Thank you for telling me this, Zoe. I know it couldn't have been easy. He stands up, squaring his shoulders. I need to confront your father, to hear the truth from his own lips. I nod, rising to my feet. I'm coming with you, Grandpa. You shouldn't have to face him alone. 
We drive to Dad's office in tense silence, the weight of what we're about to do hanging heavy in the air. When we arrive, Grandpa marches inside, his jaw set with determination. Dad looks up from his desk, his expression morphing from surprise to anger as he takes in the sight of us. What the hell are you doing here, old man? I thought I made it clear I never wanted to see you again. Grandpa throws the incriminating documents onto the desk, his voice shaking with barely controlled rage. How could you, Garrett? How could you steal from your own family, betray everything I've worked so hard to build? Dad's face pales, but he quickly recovers, his eyes narrowing with defiance. You have no idea what you're talking about, Winston. Those transactions were all legitimate business expenses. Legitimate business expenses? Grandpa scoffs, his voice rising with each word. Is that what you call paying off your wife's lover, Garrett? Is that what you call lining your own pockets at the expense of everyone else? Dad's expression twists with rage, and he rises to his feet, his fists clenched at his sides. You have no right to judge me, old man, you who lied to me my entire life about who I really am. Grandpa shakes his head, his eyes filled with disappointment. I may have lied about your parentage, Garrett, but I never once lied about my love for you. I raised you as my own, gave you everything I had, and this is how you repay me? Dad laughs, a harsh, bitter sound. Love? You call this love, Winston? You've never loved me, never seen me as anything more than a burden, a reminder of your wife's infidelity. He turns to me, his expression twisting with disdain. And you, Zoe, you just couldn't keep your nose out of it, could you? You had to go digging up the past, stirring up trouble where there was none. I feel my own anger rising to the surface, hot and fierce. There was plenty of trouble, Dad. You made sure of that, stealing, lying, cheating. You're nothing but a fraud, a disgrace to this family. Dad's face contorts with rage, and before I can react, he lunges at me, his hands wrapping around my throat. I gasp for air, my vision swimming as I claw at his fingers. Garrett, no! Grandpa shouts, trying to pull him off me. But Dad is too strong, his grip too tight. Suddenly, the office door bursts open, and Liam rushes in, his eyes widening with horror at the scene before him. He tackles Dad to the ground, breaking his hold on me. I collapse to the floor, coughing and gasping for air. Grandpa kneels beside me, his arms wrapping around my shaking shoulders. It's okay, Zoe. You're safe now, he murmurs, his voice thick with emotion. I've got you. In the background, I can hear Liam shouting for someone to call the police, his voice filled with a mixture of anger and disbelief. As the sound of sirens fills the air, I close my eyes, feeling a sense of grim satisfaction wash over me. Dad may have thought he could get away with his crimes, but in the end, the truth always comes out. And now, he'll have to face the consequences of his actions, once and for all. The courtroom is packed, the air thick with tension and anticipation. I sit beside Mom and Liam, my hands clasped tightly in my lap as we wait for the trial to begin. Dad sits at the defendant's table, his expression stony and unrepentant. He hasn't spoken a word to any of us since his arrest not even to apologize for the bruises he left on my neck. As the judge enters the room, we rise to our feet, the sound of rustling fabric and creaking wood filling the air. The bailiff reads out the charges against Dad, his voice ringing with a sense of finality. Garrett Hawthorne, you stand accused of embezzlement, fraud, and assault. How do you plead? Dad's lawyer leans in, whispering something in his ear. For a moment, I think I see a flicker of hesitation cross Dad's face, but it's gone as quickly as it appeared. Not guilty, Your Honor, he says, his voice cold and emotionless. The trial begins, and a parade of witnesses takes the stand. Grandpa Winston, his voice shaking with anger and betrayal as he recounts the years of lies and deceit. Mom, her eyes filled with tears as she admits to her own infidelity, the shame and guilt written plainly on her face. But it's the evidence that seals Dad's fate. The financial records, the offshore accounts— the hush money payments. The prosecution lays it all out, painting a damning picture of a man consumed by greed and arrogance. When it's Dad's turn to take the stand, he tries to spin a tale of misunderstanding and miscommunication. He claims that the embezzlement was just a series of accounting errors, that the money he stole was simply a loan he intended to pay back. But the jury sees through his lies, and when the verdict is read, the courtroom erupts in a chorus of gasps and murmurs. 
Guilty on all counts, the foreman says, his voice ringing out like a death knell. Dad's face drains of color, and for a moment, I think he might actually faint. But then his expression hardens, and he turns to face us, his eyes blazing with a mixture of anger and defiance. You think you've won, don't you? He snarls, his voice dripping with venom. You think you've beaten me, that you've proven yourselves better than me. He points a finger at Grandpa Winston, his face twisting with rage. But you're no better than I am, old man. You lied to me, betrayed me, just like everyone else in this godforsaken family. Grandpa shakes his head, his eyes filled with a deep, profound sadness. I never betrayed you, Garrett. I loved you, raised you as my own. It was you who betrayed us, who threw away everything we built together. Dad laughs, a harsh, bitter sound. Love? There's no such thing as love in this world, Winston. There's only power, and those too weak to seek it. He turns to me, his expression morphing into a sneer. And you, Zoe, you think you're so righteous, so pure. But you're just like the rest of them, a liar and a hypocrite. I feel my own anger rising to the surface, hot and fierce. I'm nothing like you, Dad. I would never betray my family, never hurt the people I love. Dad's face contorts with rage, and he lunges at me, his hands outstretched like claws. But the bailiffs are on him in an instant, tackling him to the ground and dragging him away. As he's led out of the courtroom, Dad's screams echo off the walls, a final, desperate attempt to lash out at the world that has rejected him. "'You'll pay for this,' he shouts, his voice raw and ragged. "'You'll all pay! I swear it!' But his threats fall on deaf ears, and as the door slams shut behind him, a sense of grim satisfaction washes over me. Justice has been served, and the truth has finally come to light. I turn to Grandpa Winston, my heart swelling with a mixture of love and gratitude. "'Thank you,' I whisper, my voice thick with emotion. "'Thank you for standing by us, for fighting for the truth.' Grandpa smiles, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. "'That's what family does, Zoe. We stand together, no matter what.' As we leave the courtroom, I feel a sense of hope and possibility wash over me. The road ahead may be long and difficult, but with my family by my side, I know we can weather any storm. The facade has been shattered, but in its place, something stronger and more beautiful has emerged. And for the first time in a long time, I feel like I can finally breathe again. The weeks following Dad's conviction pass in a blur of paperwork and negotiations, Mom's divorce lawyer works tirelessly to secure her a fair settlement, while Grandpa Winston and Liam pour all their energy into keeping Hawthorne Enterprises afloat. As for me, I throw myself into my studies, determined to make my dream of becoming a lawyer a reality. I know now more than ever that I want to fight for justice, to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. One evening, as I'm poring over my textbooks, Mom knocks on my bedroom door, a tentative smile on her face. Zoe, can we talk? I nod, setting my books aside and patting the space beside me on the bed. Mom sits down, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. I wanted to apologize, she says, her voice soft and hesitant, for everything, for the lies, the secrets, the pain I caused you and your brother. I feel a lump rising in my throat, but I swallow it back, determined to hear her out. I know you were just trying to protect us, Mom, but the truth is always better than a lie, no matter how much it hurts. Mom nods, her eyes filling with tears. I know that now, Zoe, and I promise from now on there will be no more secrets, no more lies. We'll face everything together as a family. She reaches out, taking my hand in hers. I'm so proud of you, Zoe. You've been so strong, so brave through all of this. I know your grandmother would be proud of you, too. I feel a tear slip down my cheek and I squeeze Mom's hand tightly. Thank you, Mom. That means more to me than you know. Just then... Liam appears in the doorway, a grin on his face. Hey, you two. Grandpa wants us all to come downstairs. He says he has a surprise for us. Mom and I exchange a curious glance, then follow Liam down to the living room. There we find Grandpa Winston waiting for us, a proud smile on his face. I've been doing a lot of thinking, he says, his voice strong and clear, about the future of Hawthorne Enterprises and the future of this family. He turns to Liam, his expression softening. Liam, I know you've always looked up to your father, always wanted to follow in his footsteps, but you have a chance now to be better than he ever was to lead this company with integrity and honor. Liam's eyes widen, and he nods eagerly. I won't let you down, Grandpa. I promise. Grandpa smiles, 
then turns to me. And Zoe, I know you have your own dreams, your own path to follow, but I want you to know that you'll always have a place here, always have a family to support you. I feel tears welling up in my eyes, and I rush forward, hugging Grandpa tightly. Thank you, Grandpa, for everything. As we all gather together, laughing and crying and holding each other close, I feel a sense of peace wash over me. The road ahead may be long and uncertain, but I know that with my family by my side, I can face anything. The next morning, I wake up early, my heart racing with excitement and nerves. Today is the day I start my internship at a prestigious law firm downtown, the first step on my journey to becoming a lawyer. As I get ready, I catch sight of a photo on my dresser. It's a picture of me and Grandma Evelyn, taken just a few months before she passed away. We're smiling and laughing, our arms wrapped around each other like we'll never let go. I feel a pang of sadness wash over me, but it's quickly replaced by a sense of determination. I know that Grandma is watching over me, guiding me every step of the way. I take a deep breath, then head downstairs, ready to face the world. The facade of our perfect family may have been shattered, but in its place, something stronger and more beautiful has emerged. As I step out into the bright morning sun, I feel a sense of hope and possibility wash over me. The future is mine to shape, and I know that with hard work and determination, I can achieve anything I set my mind to. The shattered pieces of our family may never be fully mended, but we've learned to find beauty in the cracks, to let the light shine through in new and unexpected ways. And for that, I will always be grateful.